and welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. If you are new, please hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you. I make lifestyle, motherhood, and education videos, and I also have a blog. If you haven't checked that out, I will have that linked in the description. We recently took a trip to Disney World with our two girls. We have a three and a half year old as well as a one year old, and this was the first time going with both the girls. We've taken Alani twice, and we've been to Disney numerous times without children, so we are learning as we go, and since this was the first time taking both girls, I thought it would be good to make a video about the types of things you may want to bring if you are taking a toddler, a baby, or young children in general to Disney. I also made a checklist with a bunch of items that I think are really great to have. Make sure you're subscribed to my blog so that you can download that checklist for free. So let's start with the fun stuff. I figured we would start with the specific Disney things. Are Disney ears necessary? No, but they are fun. So my recommendation is get your ears ahead of time. If there is a pair that you know you want to get and you can only get it in the park, go for it. But there are so many things that you can find in the park that you can also find on Shop Disney, especially if you're going at the holiday season. If you're really planning ahead, you can get some really great discounts on themed ears and then wear them when you go during that holiday. Another great option is to make your ears. I will link a video below that has a great tutorial for making your own ears. I made my own ears two years ago and I wore them again in the park this year. I think it's just a really fun thing to do. Nobody has those ears because they're one of a kind since you made them. And honestly, making them and customizing them is just a really fun experience. Magic bands are another thing that I highly recommend. You no longer get free magic bands for staying at a Disney resort. And so if you wanna get them, I say think about it ahead of time. We specifically wanted to get Alani a magic band. I looked online, but there was none that I saw that I knew she would really like. So we did plan to get hers in the park. We ended up getting her this one. This side of the band has Minnie, and the other side has the castle and says be awesome. If you are new to magic bands, they don't come in different sizes. As you can see, this one is bigger and this one is smaller. If you popped this part out, then it's automatically a smaller magic band. I of course forgot mine when we went to Disney. We used the lightning lanes a lot and I really didn't like having to pull out my phone every single time and scan it for the different rides. I definitely regretted not having one. Also, if you have little ones, it's just so easy for them to be able to do it on their own if you have the magic band. I've read that the batteries in these last about two years. We got ours two years ago when we went to Disney in 2020 and my parents worked in the park with no issue. So we will definitely be trying again next year, seeing if we can still use them. But obviously if not, we'll have to get new ones. Another Disney specific thing that's great to have is Disney gift cards. You could connect these to the wallet on your phone so that you don't have to carry around a bunch of gift cards. But if you don't know, Target Red Card members can buy Disney gift cards with the 5% off. So if you are spending a lot of money, it really does add up. We didn't end up getting Disney gift cards, but it's just something to keep in mind. The last Disney specific thing isn't really anything you need to bring to the park necessarily, but having the Disney apps on your phone is going to be crucial. Everything is in the apps, whether you're ordering food or if you are using them as your ticket, like everything is in that app. So make sure you have downloaded the My Disney Experience app and have familiarized yourself with the Disney Genie service. All right, so let's get into the toddler and baby specific things. If you've seen my What's in My Diaper Bag video, then this bag should look familiar. I had a different color and I loved it so much that I ended up buying this color as well. But this can be used as a backpack and obviously you don't have to bring a diaper bag, you can just bring a backpack. But if you were bringing a diaper bag, you definitely want it to be something that you can carry on your back. We actually brought two bags. We brought this bag and then I brought my lounge fly bag that I got at the Riviera Resort. And I think that this was really helpful because I put what I needed for diaper changes in both bags so that if Emmy needed her diaper changed, I could just give this little bag to someone. My mom and my dad were with us and then there was also Evan. So either one of them could just take this bag and go. I didn't have to like rummage through the diaper bag and find what I needed or anything like that. And so I thought it was really helpful to have my regular bag, but then also have this little bag that had a few extra things, specifically diaper changing stuff. I have my diapers, wipes, the cover that I use for the changing tables. But one thing that I realized I didn't have in my diaper bag was a first aid kit. So before heading to Disney, I got this cute little first aid kit, really small, fit easily into the diaper bag. It is Band-Aids, antibiotic ointment, as well as just a little hand sanitizer. And what I didn't put in here that I wished I had was just like 
ibuprofen or anything like that. I ended up getting a pretty bad headache while we were in the park because I had just done my hair and then I was wearing the ears. So it was just so much tightness. Luckily my dad did have something, but I should have definitely squeezed that in. I could have fit that in here and that would have been perfect. Disney World does have first aid within the park, but for something like a little scrape or anything like that, it'd be really nice to not have to trek all the way to first aid and just be able to handle it yourself very quickly. Speaking of first aid, in Magic Kingdom, it is located right next to the Baby Center. If you are not familiar with the Baby Center, I will link my video where I talk more about the Baby Center all of the parks have one. And if you do download my checklist at the bottom of the checklist, I have the location of all of the baby centers in each of the Disney World Park. Magic Kingdom recently updated theirs. I didn't stop in while we were there because I didn't need to, but I kind of wish I did just so that I could have peeked around a bit. The baby care centers are great because they have specific areas for changing. So if you don't feel like using the like hard bathroom changing area, then there are actual changing tables that you can use in the baby care center. They have the disposable linings and it's just a much nicer experience overall. They also have areas for pumping or nursing or feeding your little one. It's a nice change of scenery and if it is hot it's a nice place to just cool down. Another thing I made sure that I had was hand sanitizer as well as Clorox wipes. Normally we have something like this that we're putting on high chairs but I did not want to have to carry this around the parks so I just made sure I had a little travel thing of wipes that I can wipe things down with. Another thing that I always love to have is these disposable placemats because I can put them on the table and then I can put the girls snacks or food or whatever right on the table as well. Okay, speaking of feeding your kids, make sure you have snacks. Like think about how many snacks you think you need and then double it. I couldn't believe how quickly my girls ran through the snacks that I brought. So even though I thought I was like fully prepared, I almost ran out of snacks. Obviously there's food at Disney, but it's not cheap. So I didn't want to have to spend a ton of money getting food for the girls. I made sure to pack a lot of snacks, but I definitely underestimated how much they would be eating. It can be fun if you do the Disney theme snacks. Like I know Goldfish, you can buy like the Mickey ones, or there are other companies where like the packaging is Disney or whatever. Again, not necessary, but it can make it a little more fun. Another thing I made sure we have, even though we went in the winter time, is sun protection. So the sunblock, hat, sunglasses, not just for the kids, but for us as well. Another thing that is a diaper bag staple that you definitely wanna have in the park is extra clothes. That could be good for just going on a ride and getting more wet than you expected, but it's also good when you have little ones because you just never know what kind of mess, whether it's from food or something else, they are going to make on their clothes. And something to consider that I learned from being a preschool teacher, if you have a little one who is at the potty training age, when you are packing extra things, don't forget socks and shoes. Because if your little one does pee through their outfit and it goes all the way down, you don't want them in gross, wet shoes and socks. Oh, and back on the food thing, it's definitely good to have a water bottle, but we also bought these little juice boxes for Alani. She never really drinks these, so it made it more fun and special for her to be able to have them. Currently, I cannot find my portable sound machine, but we did bring that to the park. I kind of go back and forth on recommending it because I feel like it really didn't make a difference. Emmy fell asleep and there's just so much noise that I don't know that the sound machine even mattered. But on the subject of sound, I also prepared with these just in case anything was too loud and we didn't end up using these either. So that's another thing where it's kind of like, it's good to have, but I'm gonna be completely honest, we did not need them. Obviously, you know the essential things that you need if you are nursing or pumping or any of those things. I like having this hand pump because I think it's easy to bring with me in different places. I don't really pump often, but in those situations where for some reason, Emmy just decides she's not really hungry or anything, it is so good to have this. Obviously, if you do have to pump, then you also have to store and think about bottles and all of that kind of stuff. So I know it's not exactly easy, but do know that the baby care center does have areas where you can pump. Even if you brought a pump that needed to be plugged in, you can do that. And they have places where you can warm up a bottle and all of those different things. So they do try to make it a little bit easier for you. Depending on what type of shirt I'm wearing, I do like to have a nursing cover option. Obviously, you don't have to use a nursing cover if you do not want to use a nursing cover, but it is something that I always have in my diaper bag. So it did go to Disney with us. If you were watching this during the time that masks are still mandatory for two and up at Disney World, I highly suggest getting a mask 
lanyard. The ones that I have have this little area here so you're able to adjust it. So it's just a nice way to be able to keep track of your mask if you are taking it on and off especially for little ones. I got these on Amazon and they had ones that were specific like for kids and everything and they were so much pricier. These are the ones I went with. Alani didn't have any issue with them. I will link them because I highly recommend having these ones, whether you're using them for a kid or an adult, again, they adjust. So it really doesn't matter size-wise. Alani loved being in a carrier. Emmy is not the same, but if you do have a little one that you don't feel like having to hold in the lines, I highly recommend a carrier. Now, obviously you can get a big structured carrier and save your back for all of that time that you're going to be at Disney. But I just brought my ring sling because I wanted something that was going to be small and wouldn't take up a ton of space when we were getting all of our things together for the park. Okay, on to the really big thing for if you are traveling with little ones, the stroller. We brought our Mockingbird stroller with us to Disney. So yes, on the plane and everything, we brought it all the way down to Florida. We spent some of our vacation with family at the beach and then we also did Disney. So for us, it was good to just bring down our normal stroller. For some people, that's just gonna be a little bit too much and it might be easier to bring an umbrella stroller or it might just be easier to rent a stroller when you're at Disney. If you are taking a double stroller to Disney, obviously, if you already have one, I'm not saying go out and buy a new one, but having our stroller not be the side-by-side -side double stroller was really helpful when we were looking for areas to park our stroller in Disney. There are designated areas for stroller parking, and even though we were there at the off-season, it was very busy. So there were so few spaces for that stroller parking and having our stroller being so slim was super helpful in finding space to park it. I didn't realize how appreciative I would be of that. Also, if you are using a stroller in Disney, I highly recommend having something that makes it easily identifiable. I didn't really add anything to ours. The pink canopies as well as the itsy ritzy stroller caddy really kind of made it stand out and I didn't have to go searching for it. It was easy to spot, but if you do have a stroller that you think is going to blend in or if you end up running like the Mickey stroller that they have there, I highly recommend having something that'll make it easy for you to spot your stroller, especially because your stroller can be moved. If they are making room, they will shift the strollers, move the strollers, and you don't wanna be completely lost trying to figure out where your stroller is or have someone mistake your stroller for theirs. Along with our stroller, I brought our rain cover, which luckily we did not need. The forecast did say rain. By the time that we were at the park, there really wasn't any. So we didn't need it, but I'm glad that we did have it. Mockingbird does have a specific rain cover, and so I did bring that along with us. And then I also brought the sunshade, which ended up working really nicely for when Emmy fell asleep in the stroller. It was also nice to be able to fully recline her seat so that she could sleep comfortably while we were there. We didn't need it because it was winter, but if you are going during the warmer season, I highly recommend a stroller fan. I'll link the ones that we use, but that is such a great way to make sure that you're keeping your little ones cool. And I always have this wet bag with my stroller. This one came with the Mockingbird stroller, but obviously you could just use a Ziploc bag. It's nice to have a bag to put things if they got wet or gross. Again, you could just use like a disposable bag, but it's really good to have a place to contain any of those wet items. You never know what the weather is gonna be like in Florida, I swear. So having a poncho or rain jacket, highly recommend it. You can get disposable ones or reusable ones. We brought the girls just regular rain jackets because they don't take up that much space. We went with the disposable ones for us because obviously like a real rain jacket would take up a lot of space. I didn't really end up needing anything extra. The lines really weren't too bad. We were able to just like talk and fool around, but if you are expecting there to be really long lines, then I would recommend downloading the Play Disney Parks app because it has like different games or anything. We didn't end up using it, so I don't know too much about it, but I know that it has like fun things that you can do that can keep you entertained while you're waiting in the line or whatever you know will keep your kids entertained. I feel like that's all of the diaper bag stroller related things. I'm just gonna say some general items that I think are good to have and then some things that I think are just like Fun, definitely not necessary, but fun. This is the charging case that I used while we were in the park. It's definitely bulky to use a charging case, but it was really good to not have to worry about my battery, especially since I spent so much time on the My Disney Experience app, making sure things were flowing with us using Genie Plus and all of that. But you could also just have a charging stick like this so that you can plug in your phone 
when it is getting low. Whichever way you go, just make sure you have something so that your phone does not die. And though you can just pay through everything using your phone, I still think it's a good idea to make sure that you have your wallet. Obviously having your ID is important, but it never hurts to just make sure you have your cards and cash as well. All right, on to the fun, but completely not necessary kid stuff. Alani has this little camera. She got it for Christmas and she absolutely loves it. We didn't even end up using it in the parks. I feel like everything was just so go, go, go because I am just like the type of person who's like, all right, we're onto this. All right, we're doing this. But it is so cute and it's so tiny. So it's something that's really easy to bring. I like that it has a lanyard, so it's also hard to lose. But if your kid would want to document the experience, I think this is a really cute way to go. These wands you can easily buy ahead of time on Shop Disney. If your kid likes bubbles, it's kind of hard to avoid the bubble wand. But obviously, if you don't want to get one, you don't have to. We ended up going back home for naps and then returning to the park at nighttime. So if you are going to be at the park at nighttime, it is fun if you get like glow sticks or something like that. And then you can hopefully avoid any sort of argument about getting something light up at nighttime because you know any Thing that lights up at Disney. They've got out, they're marketing it, they want you to buy it, your kid is going to be drawn to it. And so you can buy like glow sticks or a glow wand or anything like that ahead of time. This has lights, so if you're already thinking of getting a bubble wand ahead of time, maybe get one that does have lights. And then it's a two-in-one and you don't have to bring multiple things. As I've said before, we've been to Disney many times. So it's just so crazy like talking about all of these different things that are all of these extras now that we're going with two kids. But it's so worth it. We absolutely love seeing the experience through their eyes. And as crazy as all of the Disney stuff is, I can't wait to go again with them. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And again, if you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. I will have my blog as well as anything that I mentioned and that I can link down below in the description. So make sure you check out that section. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.